Hello, I have a 2011 Chevy Impala. The thermostat recently went out on it, and today I'm going to show you how to replace the thermostat. Um, right now what's happening is, when I look at the lights, uh, and the messages on my dashboard, it comes up and it says that the uh, engine is hot and it's disabling the AC. Uh, that's not really true. It's just not get a re getting a reading from the, um, the engine compartment saying that the thermostat is actually bad. So it's just kind of a misnomer as far as the message is concerned. Uh, when driving the vehicle, you'll see right here that this cold uh, it never moves. It actually stays down the entire time. So that can be another way to help diagnose what the actual problem is. Um, in my particular case, I have an OBD2 connector uh, that I can hook up and look up to see what the actual fault code is. So it showed the thermostat was the actual problem, which made it really easy to kind of go on from there. So let's get started. Now normally a thermostat would be uh, right in this area where the top radiator tube uh, connects into the engine, but on the Chevy Impala, uh, for reasons unknown to me, they decided to put it onto the lower tube. So you can see down um, below, this is the other radiator tube when it comes up and then the actual housing is right here where it connects into the motor. So we'll be taking this clamp off and there's a couple of bolts that we'll pull off to take off the thermostat housing and um, once we get that taken apart then we'll put the new thermostat in. All right, I have to give it. I unclamped the uh, tube like I said I would. Um, it's important to know that once you unclamp that, it will uh, start to leak antifreeze fluid. So make sure you have a container, um, like I do down there, to catch any antifreeze that'll come off of it. Uh, also, as soon as I unclamped it and got the tube off, I uh, pulled it up as high as I could. So there's still antifreeze sitting in this line, but since I have it elevated above where the radiator fluid's at, it's not leaking out all over the place. Um, as you can see here, we, we do still have some coming out of the uh, thermostat housing. That's kind of to be expected, and I'm sure I'm going to be dealing with that for a little bit while I'm taking the rest of it apart. But it's unclamped now, and I'm going to find out the right size uh, sockets to take off the housing and then get to the thermostat. Um, plastic piece right here that this tube is held onto and that is actually just kind of pushed on to one of the uh, the bolts that holds the housing in place. So if we actually come back up here, here's the old uh, housing and everything. So it just sat straight up onto here. Um, so all you have to do for that is just pry it off with a screwdriver and it comes right off. Um, like I said, it, it takes a 10 millimeter socket, so just use that to unscrew it. Um, once I kind of got it loosened up, I just had to unscrew it by hand, which is pretty simple. Um, main thing too is also make sure that the top side is still pointing up. In this case, there's like this little notch right here uh, that kind of shows that it's the top side. So the piece that we're replacing is going to be this piece right here. It's the thermostat itself. Um, currently this is the old one. I'm going to pull it out and put the new one in. Alright, one thing to note is you always want to keep the orientation the same. So when we look at this old thermostat, we'll notice that there's actually uh, a small pin that sits right up here on the top. So when we put the old one in, we're going to want to make sure that we also face that upwards. That way we keep it in the same direction. Um, I don't know what would happen if we put it upside down, but it's just better to be safe than sorry. So, all right, here we can see that the new one's been put in. Uh, it's as simple as just pulling out the old one and putting the new one in. There's no special equipment or anything. Uh, just slides out and slides right back in. So now we're ready to take it and put it uh, back in. Same directions as before, but just in reverse order. So we'll put our bolts in. Um, reattach the hose and then we'll need to put some more antifreeze in it because we've lost uh, 
a fair amount just doing this process. And we'll talk more about that later. Well, right down uh, below, we've put everything back together. It's clamped on, uh, sealed up tight. Now it's time to put some antifreeze back into it. So right here is our radiator cap. We're gonna go ahead and take it off. Uh, during this process, you shouldn't have had your engine running at all anyway. So uh, it should be nice and cold. If it is hot, you don't wanna open that up. You'll get burned really bad. Uh, for this uh, type of vehicle, it uses a type of antifreeze called Dexcool. It's a GM product. I've heard some people kind of complain about it, but I still recommend sticking with it. Um, so it is what it is. That's the kind of coolant we need to put in there. Uh, you can still mix it with water, just like you would any other antifreeze. Um, but it's the orange kind, and what I'll be doing is putting a funnel in here, and filling it up till it's full, and then any uh, extra that I have, I'm going to put it over in the reservoir. So just pop this guy open. Uh, I'll just dump it down in there when I'm done and then I'm going to run the vehicle for a while so that the engine gets hot uh, enough, hot enough to open up the thermostat which is about 185 degrees and once it opens up it'll suck any uh, uh, radiator fluid into it that, ha that it can and let it flow through the system so you might need to add a little bit more it's just one of those things you'll kind of have to keep an eye on as you're uh, getting your vehicle kind of back up to uh, up to speed running it again so it'd be useful to keep some either a 50 50 mix like in the in your trunk or else keep some distilled water or some way that you can top it off if you need to at a moment's notice that way you're not stranded somewhere uh, without any way to fill up your extra interface so. all right I just want to take a moment to show you how uh, everything's working now you can see that the uh, message has gone away you can see over here that the needle is not stuck down on the cold anymore. It's actually moved up to like the halfway point. Um, I do still have this idiot light on. I'm going to check out and see what that's all about. My guess is it's just uh, residual from earlier when it was acting up. Alright, as you can see the uh, um, idiot light over on the right hand side is gone now. Um, I cleared the fault codes out and then I looked at the history and it said that it was a historic fault code so that's that's good news. I'll just keep an eye on it over the next couple of days make sure it doesn't come back. Um, other than that we should be good to go.